What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the Bullpen. Today, I got a real badass motherfucker on the podcast today. And I'm stoked to hear this dude's story because he's on here, number one, because he's accomplished some incredible stuff in his journey. This dude obviously is on. I, I think this dude is probably one of the fastest growing brands I've seen. And I've done a lot of research to kind of pick up on who this guy is before he, you know, he came on this podcast. And I can tell you guys, I'm so impressed with the variety of things that this dude has done as an entrepreneur, as a artist. I don't want to give away too much yet because I want him to tell you guys a story. As an artist, just as an as a person of influence in this in this country, in this world, I'm excited to get to those guy today. We got Mario Cannon on the bullpen. Thanks yep. for coming on, brother. Hey, thanks for having me, bro. I appreciate it, yes, man. Yes. Listen, man, there's a lot of stuff we're gonna dive into with everything you've accomplished because from what I'm seeing, you're doing a lot of stuff. A lot of shit, man. A lot of shit, right? <laughs> yeah. That and, and from someone who I, I own eleven businesses, I, I want everyone to understand that's fucking hard to do. Really hard. It like to balance one business is a lot. To balance how many businesses plus your brand, plus being an artist, you don't like you don't have time to fuck around. You don't, you don't. Right. And you know, look, this cause you own eleven businesses or yeah. twenty or whatever. Those motherfuckers might not be profitable. Right. <laughs> you might have some issues at yeah. one and you got to go over here, you know, oh, yeah. so it, yeah, it's crazy. It's it's more than a full-time job. It, it's yeah. it's your life. It's your life's work, right? It is true. So listen, man, we're going to dive into a lot of stuff, but you you all you all already know what we want to hear. Well, like the story we want to know is how the hell did you get here, bro? What's the build up? Tell us who's Mario Cannon. What's your story, bro? Listen, man, Mario Cannon, I'm from Springfield, Illinois, man. Mm. So I'm originally from Illinois. So every time somebody says, where you from, they think it's fucking Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and I got so much love in Chicago. So yeah. shout out to Chicago as well. But um, no, nah, man, I'm from Springfield, Illinois, man. I started off just um, as a kid. Um, I got into sports mm. and I always rapped. I was a rapper since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Even as, a, you know, I'm talking about like seven, eight, 19 years old. I was spitting flows, right? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I grew up in Springfield, Illinois, and you know, and we didn't have much. I was a single parent household. Um, my mom worked worked her ass off. That's why I got the hustling from. It's from my mom because mm -hmm. she hustled so hard to, mm -hmm. to provide. Um, so grew up there. Um, got into sports more heavily, more like middle school. Mm -hmm. Okay, middle school is when you start playing, you know, sports in high school and shit, basketball. Um, ended up after uh, playing high school, I actually played with Andre Equidala, right? I oh, really? I grew up with him. Oh, so, I didn't know. So, yeah. So, yep. So, um, on on my high school team, we had a bunch of like D one, like mm. uh, NBA, NFL yeah. type of guys, man. Yeah. So, uh, Richard McBride was another guy. He was he actually ranked over LeBron James at one point. No shit. Yeah. Played, in high school. In high school, playing for U of I. Yeah. Really. Yep. Shit Almighty. Yep. I, I thought I thought he was the chosen one from like freshman year in high school. No, man. So the the uh, actually my high school had the chosen one. It was Richard McBride, actually. Really? Yeah. He was like shooting from almost like half court three pointers and dunk. He's like a, a mm. Baron Davis like type of guy. Yeah. But, but yeah, but he kind of peaked out too early. I think that's what happened. But right. he's a great guy. He's coaching now or whatever. But I think no, he had injuries. That's what happened. So right. he had some injuries and yeah. some shit. But um, but back to me, man. So me. Um, I'm playing, I'm playing high school ball. I've been playing, I was playing varsity in eighth grade. So in eighth yeah. grade, I was practicing with the varsity team That's and shit. Badass, yeah. You know, I was a decent player, man. Right. Um, I'm not saying I was an all-star, but I was a stud. You know, I was good. Well, you still are. I mean, like, <laughs> you walk in, you look like a fucking tank. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Now, I would have guessed football just the way you're built. Dude, I've been skinny my whole life. Really? Yeah, man. Uh, I got swole as, as I got in my 20s. I start my late 20s, I start working out heavy. Dude, there's something about dudes hitting their 20s, man. It's like they're like all of a sudden they just start swelling. Like, yeah, believe Dude, it, I got swole. So, <laughs> and I'll say, I start, like, end of my 20s, like yeah. 28, 29, I got swole, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, so like, so after high school, you know, that's when life got real, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I got a scholarship to mm -hmm. go to UIS, University of Illinois in Springfield. It was academic, actually. Really? I, I was actually smart. <laughs> um, believe it or not, you know. Um, so I got a scholarship and some financial aid to go there. I had offers from, like, community college and JUCOs for basketball. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I didn't take them because I thought that wasn't good enough. I was like, man, I got to be D1. You know, I right. didn't have the mindset that, yeah. you know, you got to crawl before you walk. I was like, man, everything's got I got to do a big and everything. So I did that, man. Um, committed. And then I was in the streets, bro. So really? I come from, so my family, you know, we don't come from much. In fact, you know, my household, I was like the first guy to graduate high school. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? How many siblings um, do you have? Your own so 
I didn't have any siblings in my house. Got so it. so my siblings were my cousins. Oh, okay. So yeah. so we we lived like next door in the same house a lot of right. times. So okay. like, so so me uh me and Muggsy, that's Reggie Day, he lived next door to me and then it was uh Anthony Gant, Tony Obama Jr. Like we all were like it was just we were the yeah. siblings, right? Right. You're all cl- close together, yeah. So um so we did everything together, you know, mm-hmm. music, street stuff, whatever, you yeah, know. Right. We in the hood, baby. Mm-hmm. You know, we gotta do what we do, right? right. So me, i I was living a double life. So what happened when I got to college is reality hit. Mm. I'm not that good at basketball. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was a shit in high school, right? right? Everybody got that damn crossover. Mm. Everybody can do that move. Yeah. So first practice, man, I throw a fit, man. I, mean, I throw my headband. I, mm. I know I get into a little altercation, whatever. One of the players, mm. because I'm thinking like I'm the shit. Right. You ain't the shit, bro. Mm-hmm. So after that, man, I kind of just redshirted myself actually, and then um, I was I was hustling and going to school at the same time. Mm. So on campus, I'm driving a new. This is when the Dodge Chargers first came out. <laughs> man, I'm I'm on, I'm a student. I'm 18 years old, man. Yeah. I'm driving a Dodge Charger on 24 inch rims, mm. touch screen. Back then, that's a big deal. I had to. You what know, year was this? This is uh, this is 05, man. 05. How old are you? I'm 36. 36. Man. Oh, dude, you look young, man. Man, I don't I don't drink. Oh shit, dude! I thought you were like in your 20s. Now I'm 36, man. Oh damn, yeah, you look you're looking good, bro. Okay, Thank you. hell yeah, good. Thank All you. right, Thank okay, you, man. Because you're like saying this like touch screen back then. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, so I had the shit that come. You know, you press the button, the fucking screen came out. Oh yeah, you know? okay, so okay. A, that was a player move, right? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. I I'm get rolling, that. boom, yeah. boom. You know, yeah. So, um, so I knew I knew I was going down a path of destruction. In the back of my mind, I knew it was like, man, you know, any any given time, I'm gonna either get killed or I'm gonna go to go to prison mm-hmm. uh, or something, right? So I, I ended up joining the Air Force. So what I cool, did was, okay. so what I did was, I enrolled into the Air Force on, on an ASVAT test. I scored an eighty-five. Mm. All right, uh, I had Sergeant Doyle was recruiting me. So I went down to St. Louis, got my MEPS, got sworn in. Mm-hmm. I did everything I was supposed to do, um, and I had a basic training. You know, you go for uh, down to Texas, you go and do your basic training down yeah. there. All right, so love Texas. So I was fucking ready to go. Yeah. So they had a date set up for me. It was like I think it was like December or some shit. I don't remember mm-hmm. January or some shit like that. And I called my sergeant. I said, Hey, man. Um, recruiter guy, I said, "Hey man, uh, move it up early." Mm. I was like, "I'm gonna be dead or in jail before I even make that shit." <laughs> what you think happened the next week? I got yes. locked up, bro. Really ruined everything, right? So mm. now I feel like a fucking failure, bro. Yeah. So now I'm fighting this fucking case. Uh, I'm in school still, right? I'm going yeah. back to school, but I'm ashamed, man. I'm, I mean, like they made they try to make it like a fucking big deal out of out of yeah. me, and they put it in the paper and shit. I felt like I let everybody down. And that was the first time my mom. And my, you know, she had to see me in shackles, bro. Uh-huh. She had to see me in fucking chains and shit, you know. And I felt like shit, man. I really did. So, um, in that meantime, you know, as having a record, you know, and mm-hmm. and going to school, you know, you get treated a little different. Right. So I try to keep it under wraps so people wouldn't look at me different. But every time we had a group assignment, I have to tell my teacher like, "Yo, don't put me in a group with these kids. They don't des- they don't have they don't deserve to deal with what I'm bringing. I'm bringing too much baggage, mm-hmm. you know." I'm not guaranteed to be free mm-hmm. when this shit is due. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, but at the whole time I'm I'm dealing with this shit. I'm still rapping, bro. I'm still mm-hmm. dropping videos and shit. And in fact, I I had dropped a video um about a town in Illinois, and they banned me from the town. Why? Because I said I was like selling drugs there. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, so I made a song about making money in their yeah. town, how easy it was. Yeah. So they went on Facebook and the police and they made a comment like, he can't come back here. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yo, I, the, hey, the nerve of me, man. Are I was, you still banned from that town? No, they, okay, I'm okay. cool. They love all me, right, man. Right, I'm, I'm totally different dude now, man. Okay, but yeah. no, dude, I was a little arrogant prick, right? Yeah, I was yeah. a little cocky shit, man. I'm in the street, you know. I got, mm-hmm. you know. So um, I'm, I'm rolling around, man. So they, I'm still making music. I'm fucking. I'm fighting this case, and guess what? My dumbass does, bro. Just keep buying more loud shit. I didn't care. I didn't mm-hmm. care at, at that point. I didn't care, man. Yeah. I'm in the streets. I'm making this fucking money. Mm-hmm. I can't get a job. Nobody's gonna hire me. I got a pending case, mm-hmm. you know. Um, once once everything was all said and done, um, once I got you know my time, I, I did my little county time serving mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, it wasn't a whole bunch of shit, man. I was on probation. Um, I had a lot of community service. I had to pay a shit ton of fines. Mm-hmm. And then you know, pretty much now I'm a felon. Mm-hmm. So so you know how you gonna live as a felon, mm-hmm. you know, and try to go to school. That's what I was trying to do, man. But mm. I, I couldn't get a job mm. to fucking save my life. Bro. Yeah. So that, so that yeah, was right. yeah. that was hard for me, man. Um, I ended up working um, at Nordstrom for a little bit. I was a women shoe salesman. Nice. <laughs> fucking made bank, bro. <laughs> Making bank, bro. Uh, I was I was women shoe salesman and stylist. Dude, I got promoted. I ended up being like the one of the youngest managers. 
And then you ask him, how did I, how did I get that job? Yeah. I got it in Missouri. Okay, yeah, yeah. Illinois wasn't going to hire me. I had a record at Illinois, right? Mm. So I, I just fucked. All right, cool. I, went I mean, to, Missouri's like right down, like it's right beneath. You yeah, know? yeah, bro. Close, yeah. So I went to St. Louis, bro, and I, I went to a class to, for uh, felons to rehabilitate people who's been through, who's been in a system and shit mm-hmm. and had like, you know, psychological issues and shit. Mm-hmm. And shit, they fucking helped me, man. And they told me how to get a job mm-hmm. and, and what to use and what to say and what not to say and shit. And now... At that, when I got that job, dude, I'm hiring people doing background checks and shit. Yeah. I'm the one with the fucking background. You're the one, yeah. Well, I'm going to give you a background <laughs> right. check, you know? Yeah. So so I did that for a while, man. But at the same time, bro, I was living a double fucking life. So I would leave work and take my suit off, put my gold teeth in, and I'm back in the motherfucking streets. So even after you had the, th- the record, you were still going back to that. Man, that's all I knew, man. Why? Because it made me feel good. It made me feel wanted. It made me feel important. It made you feel respected. Yeah, man. I, mm. I wanted to, you know, I didn't have no father, right? So that mm. was when I was in the street, man, I felt like I had love. Mm. You know, like all I ever wanted, man, honestly, you know, my goal was to get rims on my car. Mm. I wanted rims and gold teeth and a chain. Yeah. That's all. And that was it. Yeah. After I died, that, got that, I said, I made it. I'm done. You're done. You're done. <laughs> no, seriously. Really? I thought I made it, man. That uh. was it. And um, that's why I was, you know, still in the street. And then so, well, the, the turning point was when it started getting real when I started losing people, right? Yeah. So then I lost all my brothers, right? So first one to go was Tone. I lost him um, to gun to uh, gun violence, right? Gun violence, yeah. Now keep in mind, before that, I had been in plenty of shootouts. I've been around a lot of shootings and stuff. Uh-huh. I never was a, a gangster, hardcore gangster dude. I was just, you know, I was playing a role. Yeah. I was a pretty boy fly guy. I wasn't trying yeah. to... I ain't want to hurt nobody, you know, but... Well, correct me if I'm wrong, there's a huge difference between being in gangs and doing the gang lifestyle as opposed to just dealing. Yeah, dealing. Right? Completely different. Yeah, I mean, so, you, you can mix the two, but at the same they, time, like, they they're kinda, different. But they kind of merge too, right? So yeah. now it's merging, like, the clique. So your clique, who you get money with, is like your gang now, right? So mm. it's like subsections. Yeah. So we end up beefing with, and beefing with people we grew up with. Mm. And, and then sometimes, like, I had beef with my own distant family members. I didn't even know they were my family because at that time, I didn't know who mm. really my father was at the mm. time. You know, it was kind of like a, a mix in the air, like who my dad really was. Mm. So, so, so that I got, that, I'm going through that too, right? Yeah. So, I'm, so I got, I got my mom, and I'm trying to find out who my dad really, really is at the time. You know, I'm told one thing, and it, it was fucking confusing, bro. Yeah. Imagine not knowing where you belong. Like I don't yeah. fucking know who my dad is. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so the only love and respect I'm getting right now is in the street. So then once I lost, I lost t- tone. Um, and that night, the only reason why I, we were always together, mm-hmm. the only reason why I wasn't with him that night that uh, the shooting happened is because I was rapping in Peoria. I was in another show, mm-hmm. and me and him, I got into a fight. We got into an argument the night he got killed because I, he was supposed to be with me, mm-hmm. and I had women with me. Mm-hmm. So having women saved me because um, the night going back from my show, I was supposed to meet him. Mm-hmm. But instead of meeting him, I had to drop one of the ladies off and was way out of the way. Mm-hmm. So I ended up staying out that way, mm-hmm. and then that's, that saved my life. Mm-hmm. So I would have I would have been there right with him in a, in a shootout, man. So that's what started started to scare me. Mm-hmm. So that's when I started to change. You know, I was like, man, I'm gonna die. Yeah. Because a rumor was like, man, you know, you might be next. You know, there was all type of rumors and shit. You know, and I I didn't want to be next. You know. Mm-hmm. So even though I had protection, I wasn't supposed to have protection at that time. You Talk know. About just like having a gun on you. And I stuff. had yeah. to, man. Right. I had to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. I was scared, mm-hmm. but I played tough all the time. You right. know, always in my music. You know, I gotta fucking put this this front up, man. I'm this badass mm-hmm. right now, still. You know, I'm hurting, but mm-hmm. motherfuckers ain't gonna fuck with me. You know. Yeah. Um. After that, man. Um. I ended up going to school, coming back to Illinois because I was getting ready to uh, violate probation. Mm. So the thing is, is I'm not supposed to leave the state. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Huh. But I couldn't fucking get a job, man. Yeah. So, in order for me to get a job, but back then, the one about hiring felons, mm-hmm. hell, fuck though. No. Right. So, you know, the finesse the situation, I had to get a job in Missouri, man. Mm. So my my PO, man, he was so tough on me all the time. Like, I know you're not living in Illinois. You got to be somewhere else. I've been by your grandma's house. You're never there. Mm. I'm like, I'll be at work. So he's like, what do you work at? So I work at a you know fashion place. I I never told him. Right. I was working in fucking Missouri, because mm. then I'd be locked back up. Yeah. Um. So. That that I had to come back because it was getting too many close calls. Right, I came back to Illinois, and um, I uh, stopped working at Nordstrom, and, and I was working back at 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 and T 
Um, mm-hmm. I had a job at AT and T in college for a little bit. It was an authorized retailer, not a corporate. Corporate wouldn't hire me because of my record. Right. But I got I got it in through yeah. somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, um, dude, I fell off hard because I'm not in the streets no more. Mm. So and I used to have so all you, those all so you, those all those cars and shit. Yeah. Gone. You sold them. I, I lost them. Oh yeah, yeah. I lost all that shit. Yeah. Right. Um, I was living in a um, efficiency apartment. Mm. Right. Yeah. No furniture. Yeah. Uh, walking to work. I had a CD burner. Uh. That's it. I was still selling my CDs. Yeah. But I noticed, you know, I didn't have any, all those people around me no more. Nobody gave a fuck. Yeah. I was I was by myself, man. Mm. That was the best thing that ever happened to me, man. Ooh, I like that. That pain was great because mm-hmm. it, it made me build myself up mentally. Now I don't need objects to build me. Mm-hmm. I am the object. Mm-hmm. I am I am everything I need. I am me and God right here. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, once I lost every fucking thing, mm-hmm. that's when I gained everything. Um, I didn't have power half the time in my apartment, dude. Mm. Nobody knew that. Nobody knew on social media. All they knew was, man, this man's still making music. Mm. You know, he's still doing his thing. Right. I was fucking hurting, man. Yeah. Walking to work and shit. And I built, I built up a great relationship in the town of Lincoln. Um, I had great customer service, and um, I was doing really good, man. And eventually, uh, I started uh, being a personal trainer. Mm. I got, I so saw a guy, uh, uh, this guy, man, he's like, man, he, he fucking changed my life, dude. He came in and he said, dude, you're a badass rapper. You got all these songs. I was fucking killing in the mm-hmm. music at that particular time and working at the same time, bro. Mm-hmm. He's like, hey, man, um, you're wasting your talent working for another company. Mm-hmm. He's like, you're making them rich. He's like, so you got talent, man. He said, come work for me at any time fitness. Mm-hmm. I was like, ah, yeah, man, maybe, man. I kept blowing them off and shit. And um, I got promoted at AT&T like, to like an assistant manager. And I was mm-hmm. making decent money. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Bluetooth headsets on deck. Bleak, you know, mm-hmm. everything good, man. Yeah, got right. the newest fucking phones. Touch them up. What's right. up, baby? Right. Which phone you want to call me on? <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, but I wasn't happy deep inside. I didn't see like an end game for me. Mm-hmm. And I wanted more cars. And I wanted, I knew like doing the math of the money I was making, there's no way I'm buying an iced out chain. Mm-hmm. And no way I'm getting in further shit in life I want, you know. Ice style chains can range anywhere from like we're talking like 20 to 100 grand. Like they get very yeah, very expensive. Yeah, I right? say I say I'll be realistic. I'll say more like 10,000 to 10,000. Yeah, you can get shit for 10k. Yeah. You can get, you know, good quality diamonds for 10,000. Yeah. yeah, hell yeah. Fuck yeah. I get all my shit from Flawless Diamonds in Chicago, uh-huh. so yeah. Um but fucking after that shit, man. So, um I fucking the guy, I finally, you know, he convinced me to come over to be a personal trainer and manager, mm-hmm. right? But I didn't have a fucking salary. I didn't have any hours. Yeah. He's like, you're your own boss. You just do what you got to do. So, man, I'm like, I don't know shit about personal training, bro. Right. I'm the, I just, I, I was a skinny ripped at the time. I worked out. Yeah. Because I was, I was working out because fuck. Right. What else to do in a small town? Lincoln. Yeah. I mean, you grew up that way with basketball and all that, right? It was already yeah. in my blood. Mm-hmm. So I, wor- I was working out and shit, man. And um, I ended up, um, Started getting into acting more. I did acting in college too, by the mm. way, uh, and in Bloomington. Um, but I started getting into acting more. Like I started being background extra mm. in Chicago. So what I was doing, I was training. This is crazy, crazy ass shit. I was training, you know, 10, 12 hours a day sometimes. Mm. And then I'll fucking like take a day or I'll leave that night and go to Chicago. Mm. I'll leave at like two in the morning. And I was, and the cops started to know me, like they fucking were cool with me. So mm-hmm. I let like one of the cop dudes on the, on the force know he was like a member of the gym. Mm-hmm. Like, hey man, I'm leaving. It's two in the morning, small town, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like fifteen thousand people. They know everybody. Yeah. I was like, hey man, I'm gonna leave, go to Chicago. I'm I'm trying to be an actor, man. I'm gonna sleep on set. I'm gonna sleep outside so I can be a background. Mm-hmm. So that's what I was doing. I was being a background extra and shit. Um, my buddy LaRoyce Hawkins had got me hooked up with Chicago PD because mm-hmm. uh, on NBC because he's one of the main characters on there, and mm-hmm. we went to we went to school together. I asked you. I used to pay his phone bill, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, man. I was mm-hmm. in the street, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. College yeah. getting money still. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. I, I told my teachers, man, like, this this ain't for me, man. Like, mm-hmm. I'm driving a better car than you, man. I got it. Yeah. Something ain't adding up, man. You're, well, school's bullshit anyway. You yeah, got all these yeah. fucking degrees, man. Right. And, and, you know, I'm still, I'm you know, I'm, I'm living a little better than you, bro. Right. You know, I got, yeah, yeah. you know. But, no, um, he got me into uh, acting, man. And that's when I started being a background extra and, and, and things like that. And so I didn't have an agent yet. So yeah. I was just getting on like Empire, Chicago Fire, PD, just doing, you know. And I was, if I didn't sleep on his floor at his place, I slept in my car. Yeah. And I was still training. Right. You know how I stayed up? Energy drinks. 
Fat, fat burner pills. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> I was fucking. So yeah, I, that's basically the same thing. That's like yeah. caffeine, right there. Dude, I was taking fat burners, and yeah. I, I noticed my health was declining too. A oh little yeah, bit because I was like, damn man, like your heart rate's like 150 dude, beats per minute. At that yeah. yeah, and I was getting like fucking skinny and shit. And I saw, I like I actually looked older during that time. I started looking older and shit. Yeah. So um, I was like, man, I gotta you know I gotta find, find an agent. I need an agent and shit. I need a balance or whatever. So um, I got my first audition. I got I pulled an audition for this uh the film festival or whatever. Yeah. So it was coming up, man. So the day the day of the of the audition I had to do, um, it was it was a fuck. This day changed my life again, bro. Mm. Um. So I got this fucking audition. So I'm jetting to Chicago. I got a call from my auntie. She said, "Hey, um, they just shot Reggie." Mm. I said, "They shot Reggie." You know, that's my that's Muggsy. You know, Muggsy. It's my brother, man. It's my that's my fucking heart. I'm on way to this audition. And I like I said, where at? And she said in the head and she hung up on me. And um I had to make a choice at that time, right? Mm. I turn around, go back to Springfield, mm. or do I just go into this audition where I'm like forty five minutes away at this time, thirty minutes away. So I'm I'm balling, I ain't gonna lie, I'm crying, driving of course. I'm crying. Right. Uh I'm just screaming at God, like, why the fuck are you taking all my people, mm-hmm. you know, I ain't, I ain't got nobody. You go to my old videos, none of them people are alive. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That shit hurt, <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. It don't sit well with you, you know? And so um, I just kept pushing for it. I just went to the audition. I got a homie that was waiting for me. Ruben was waiting outside, and he was like, man, you all right, bro? I was like, man, man I just lost Muggsy. He's like, I'm sorry, bro. He said, man, how the fuck do you? He's like, bro. You, are you going to do what are you going to do, man? I was like, let's just go upstairs. We was downstairs. So I'll go upstairs. And um, it's multiple uh, uh, casting directors. And this is for the 48-hour hour film festival. I had never done this shit before. I didn't know. It's my, like I said, it's my first like real audition. Right. Everything else is just background and shit. <clears throat> I got so much pain in me, man. They give me the fucking script. I fucking kill it. Mm. One of the directors, the guy asked me, he's like, Man, it seems so real. Mm. I said, because it is. And I just left. I didn't say shit else. I just left. Mm-hmm. Then that um, so that night I was dealing with the death and shit situation. But the next day, I got like fucking call every fucking director that was there called to try to book me. I, I only could choose one because it was a film festival. Mm. So that was my first time I had ever gotten a role for anything. Mm-hmm. And it was with uh, uh, it was actually with another famous guy too, like Earl something Junior. I forgot. He's like a um, a, a relative or somebody famous, but it was a crazy. The movie was called Religio. I played a detective, mm. but losing losing my losing Reggie, man, losing, losing Muggsy right there, man, was and that hurt me so bad, man. Because mm-hmm. and that's again, it's another pivotal point. Just to fucking because he was the type of motherfucker that st- that stood up for you mm-hmm. and had your back. He was a real dude, right? Um, so from now on, from now place, I was like, man, you know what? No, no matter what the fuck I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give it my all, and I ain't gonna let nobody tell me I can't do it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna stand for some shit. Instead of following, I'm not following the crowd anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm making my own decisions for real now. Right. So, with that, at that point, man, um, I landed that role. Um, I, I did. I did that. We actually won a few awards at the 48 Hour Film Festival. This first time I did that. Awesome. And then guess what I did after that? I bought the gym I was working for. Really. Wait, how much money did you make from this film? Shit. I didn't make shit off that. Well, how'd you have the money to buy the gym? I was a dope-ass personal trainer, bro. Okay. <laughs> I, had a, I had a client. Mm-hmm. Um, I love this client. I had him write me a check for PT for the whole year. Ah. And yeah, I, yeah, yeah. So it's all about relationships, man. Relationships mm-hmm. over money, man. Mm-hmm. And I tell people that I chose relationships over money. So mm-hmm. because I had these good relationships, people were willing to back me. Mm-hmm. So my client and my friends, you know, they're my friends. Husband and wife. Mm-hmm. Not only did they write me a check for the year, on top of the money I already had, they taught me how to build my credit. Mm. I didn't know shit about credit. Everything was cash. Yeah, man. right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I built my credit up with them, um, and I and I and they told me, you know, to to buy the gym. They said mm-hmm. buy it, and I bought that motherfucker, man. The Anytime Fitness Place. I bought it. Nice. Man. And it was crazy. I had to go to Minnesota, Woodbury, in January. Fucking negative fifteen, negative twenty yeah, up there. Yeah, shit's yeah, freezing. And keep in mind, man, I just bought the gym. I spent all my money, so mm-hmm. I didn't even know how I was gonna pay f- for being there. Yeah. So the whole time I'm in the hotel, I'm praying my cards don't get declined mm-hmm. <laughs> because mm-hmm. I fucking spent all my money buying yeah. the fucking gym, man. Mm-hmm. 
but it all it all worked out, mm-hmm. man. Uh, through the through the grace of God. So now I was, you know, I own my first business, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And I'm pushing, and I'm acting. I'm still acting. Mm-hmm. And I got another big ass break. Mm-hmm. I got on Empire, mm-hmm. Fox Empire. Yeah. And um, they uh, brought me on as a guest star, mm-hmm. and I did music for them as well. I had to re-record one of Terrence Howard's songs. Mm. So, and that was incredible. That was an incredible experience, man. Yeah. And from there on out, man, it just pushed the music. So that made me blow up in music, right? Mm-hmm. So right after that, I do a song with Twista. If you, I don't know if you know who Twista is. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a Chicago legend. Um, he had the song Celebrity Overnight with Jamie Foxx. Mm-hmm. Um, he was signed with, I think he was signed with P. Diddy for a, for a minute too. Mm-hmm. So he took me on tour with him. I did a song with him, then he took me on tour. Wow. And I was the only, I was like one of the only independent artists on this, previously on this uh, Las Vegas uh, Lovers and Friends Festival with mm-hmm. like Lauryn Hill, Usher, and Snoop Dogg. Mm-hmm. I was on that show. Damn. Yeah. Wow. I, I, two two days. Mm-hmm. I performed two nights. That was the first time in Vegas I was actually on a stage like that. Yeah. So that's how I changed it around, man. So the Empire thing opened that up. And to now today, um, today I own... Um, uh, commercial real estate. Mm. You know, I own a shoe store. I own a gym. Right. About to open a few more gyms. I own a few. I own a few rest, small restaurants too. I was like small. Yeah. Uh, small percentage owner, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, I stake in those as well. Right. So. Yeah. But yeah, man. So and um, honestly, man, my family, man, you know, has suffered a lot. Um, and so for me, my purpose, bro, is for my family. Mm-hmm. Um, whether they, you know, they believe it or here, and I know they believe it. I know they feel it because they're the reason why I keep going because I want to be um, a product and a symbol of something good that we mm-hmm. got that represents us, man. Because I, I, ain't, I ain't really had no male role models that did anything mm. but sell, sell drugs right. or, or work a job. And I looked up to the drug dealers cause they had the love in the hood, man. They had mm. the, they had the cars, they had the women, they had the respect, they had the power. Mm. So I mean, that's kind of what I had glorified as a, you know, as a kid, right? Drug dealers and rappers. Well, let me ask you about that then, right? Because obviously, like, there's a lot to unpack here. There's yeah. a lot, right? Yeah. But I've al- I've always just had this one question, right? If if, it, if it's so bad, why why don't people more people leave? It's it's hard you know? to leave. You got to find a way out. So because that's all you know. Okay. So, so it's all programming, right? Mm-hmm. If you if if all you know is this particular store in this particular region, mm-hmm. uh, how how are you going to leave? You're just going to get up and walk out one day and just keep walking until you find something. I mean, like, I guess, I guess I think like, go get a job, like in another state, right? You So like, here's, here's my thought process, right? And this is what I want you to help me understand. You know, when it gets so bad in that situation, I just keep thinking, like, man, just leave, like yeah. go to another state, get a fresh start, which is what you did, right? Yeah. Which is one of the best things that you could have done because you realize it's on me. But I have money. Well, so like that's things like you also had times where you didn't have money, right? I where did. you're sleeping in your car and doing yeah. all that stuff. So why don't more people have that thought to just leave? Like what it is take, it because they're making money doing, you know, the yeah. drug dealing stuff? I think a lot of it takes discipline too, mm-hmm. right? But it's, it's a lot of it, it. A lot of it can be systematic. And we got to understand that we know systems work. Mm-hmm. You got to learn to fuck a systems and you can't be a pussy. Mm-hmm. You got to buckle down and say, right. no, I'm not, I'm not going to fucking do that. I'm going to mm-hmm. do different. So what I had to do was when I was fucked up, right? When I was broke. Mm-hmm. I, I had employment. Mm. In order for my employment to be gainful, I had to pull back on some of the luxuries that everybody else had. Yeah. So I didn't have furniture. Mm. I didn't have the nicest phone. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I couldn't buy all the shoes anymore. I used to wear when I was selling drugs. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. So I had to sacrifice so I can make those economic economic gains. Yeah. So I can then put myself in a position. Because on least. this side, you were making the money. You had the car. You're making enough money for yeah. shoes and lifestyle and furniture. Yeah. Out. yeah. Or even just like, you know, just affording a basic, you know, lifestyle. You're making the money there, Making right? the money, yeah. And on the other side, if you give that up, it's the sacrifice that, that you're giving all this up to basically go to nothing. And you got to hear motherfuckers talk shit about you, you know. So mm-hmm. you got to build a mental fortitude. Yeah. So, I, I you know, the, the way out is here first. Mm-hmm. You get it right in here. Man, you can go fucking far, man. Yeah. But you got to get it in here. When you can separate from the pack, man. And that's one thing I always was really smart at doing. Um, I you can hear it in my old songs. I was the highway kid. Mm. I was never afraid to get the go. That's mm-hmm. what made me successful. Yeah. And that's kind of the same method I'm taking now. Mm-hmm. I'm in fucking Utah. Yeah. On your show. Right. 
I could have stayed. I could have stayed and waited to go to you know the other right. the next state to make my money. Or you could have been one of the other guests who who tell me like, oh, let's do Zoom. I'm like, and I actually don't do Zoom podcasts anymore. Yeah, you know, because I'm like, no, like if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it in person. You know, but you took that time. You're you're here, right? I got on the damn plane and came here. Right. Man. I didn't know yeah. shit about Utah. <laughs> I'm looking at the map like, okay, and yeah. people tell me, like, yeah, man, you know, it's gonna be great. You know, everybody's nice there. I'm like, all right, whatever. You know, I ain't never been, yeah. so I thought it was gonna be cold as shit. So I came with like fucking jacket on, <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's not even cold. It's yeah. fucking. It's, it's like like regular weather, man. Yeah, so right, and everybody yeah. here is nice. I mean, if you're from Illinois, it gets cold up there too. Illinois man. shitty, yeah. yeah, yeah it gets horrible cold. weather. Yeah. yeah, we got the humidity. Right. Yeah. Yeah, humidity and the free, yeah, it just yeah. gets you the bones at that point. Yeah, it hits you. Um. Okay. Well, let me ask you this, then. Right. Okay. When we're talking about the mental fortitude thing, yeah. For me, what I've come to realize is, if you're popular, and what I mean by popular, like here's the thing: a lot of people knowing your name and knowing who you are and being fans and and ha- having influence is different than being popular, right? Yeah. If you constantly have a lot of people around you and you're always like, you know, like just in the scene, just with people, a lot of times that's a bad sign because success doesn't breed, you know, like a lot of people around you. Success breeds contempt, and by by definition, that also breeds loneliness isolation bro. isolation yeah bro. right you have to be alone in, yeah. a, in a big way being alone is one of the biggest advantages but no one wants to be alone it's also one of the most miserable things in the world it is right yeah. and you took the time you you not only were in that position but you continually put yourself back in that as a position to be alone over and over and over again so what was that like for you um you know being alone was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me because yeah. because like you said i was popular and, and so mm. being popular, man, was hurt me. Yeah. Because you can, yes. Because think about it, man. The more people you got around you, you got that's the more chances you have of, of failure, right? Mm-hmm. So these are all liabilities. You got all these liabilities around you. Mm. All these people. So now you got you're dumping on you. They got their fucking energy. And they got their fucking drug habits. Yeah. You're gonna pick up all that shit, right? Amen. You know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But when you when you isolate, you're alone, man. Mm-hmm. You can now you could fucking get a clear head and yeah. really get to know you. Yeah. What the fuck do you want to do? Yeah. Not what your family tell you what you need to do, mm. or not what you learned in school or whatever, because they program you to just to be a worker. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. What the fuck do you want to do with your life, man? What makes you happy? What makes you tick? Yeah. It might it might not align with with the systems they got in place. It might uh, might not even align with the Bible that you're reading mm. or whatever or whatever book, whatever studies. But what really makes you happy as an individual? Mm. What is your purpose? What is your why? Yeah. Your why's got to be bigger than you. Mm. What is it? Dude, let me do. Let's talk about that. Right. That's powerful. What you're talking about. If everyone listening to this would just listen to what you just fucking said, they would look at any problem that came in their life and they'd realize I'm bigger than this. <sighs> right. And that, I, that's what I try to preach over and over. Cause I talk, I've, I've actually been more open talking to people about how I don't believe depression and anxiety is a thing. I believe you will feel depressed and I believe you will feel anxiety, but that's not who you are. It's not who when you someone are. prescribes you as that this, you're a depressed human being. I'm like, who the fuck are you to tell me? I was saying that when you, I was right. thinking that when you said that to me, <laughs> who the fuck are you to tell me who Man. I am? Yeah. I'm not a depressed human being. I feel depressed because I put myself in sad situations because life happens. Family members are killed. Like we, we were just having this conversation. A good friend of mine just took his own life this weekend, right? That is life. Right. And it is the shittiest thing in the world. But at the end of the day, I feel depressed, but I'm not a depressed human being. Yes. Right. And anyone who tries to tell me that immediately by death, because of who I know I am, I immediately look at someone and go, the fuck did you just say to me? Like, you're trying to tell me who I am, especially when they ask me the question of who do you think you are when, like, you know, you're trying to do something different. Like, you're you're, you're abandoning us. Like, yeah. you're no longer with us. You know, yeah. like, it's like, damn straight. Because, and they'll ask you this question. Who do you think you are? Go, who do I think I am? What the fuck are you talking about? You have no idea who the fuck I am or how great I am. Right? And then you're trying to you're trying to put me at your standard? Yeah. The fuck you just say, right? And that's why when you're talking about being alone, you discover who you really are when you're alone. Yeah, man. You can't do that when you're with people. Can I, I went through that shit. Think about it, man. Think about me. I live in a town that's predominantly white right now, bro. Yeah. Think about my think about my trans, my transition, right? Mm. I, I was just in the fucking hood, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So think about how I'm getting judged. And think right. about my vernacular. Look how I talk, you know. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to school. I'm I'm speaking. You know. I'm talking like I'm educated. You yeah. know. So think about the shit. The shit I get from motherfuckers. Right. Call me white boy. You know, oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Saying yeah. uh, the, the dude changed. Or he only hang around white people now. Mm. Uh, and even the women. You know, I had issues with women. Like, oh, he only fucks with white girls or things like that. All be all because of you know I was alone yeah. and, and I was trying to grow. So so then you know it came to like 
I had an inner circle of guys I, I, I talked a little bit. I used to talk to, but when I started being more, I'll say like red pill. Mm. Yeah. Um, I got real red pill, right? Yeah. And I, I took a little too far, I think, sometimes, but I was fucking like, you know what? I'm building my confidence back up. Yeah. I'm worried about more more me. And so and so when, I, I, I ain't gonna lie to you, man, I became super more, super conservative. I'm not trying to put yeah. myself in a box saying I'm a conservative. I'm saying that's, I, I was a business owner, man. Yeah. And so I started. You have to. <laughs> so I started looking at shit for what it was. Right. Right. And not how I felt. So, well, you built it. Yeah. You went through the pain and struggle and you built it. So yeah. you're going to have that defense up of like, this is mine and that's yours. Yeah. You, we're not going to share this. No, no, right? not at all. So then, you know, I got people who will never speak to me again because, mm. because of, you know, I've changed my, my thought process and the, yeah. the way I view shit, man. Because I don't let the fucking media tell me what to do, man. Yeah. And I'm not, you're not going to put me in a category based off of what you think I should fucking do. Right. You're not going to compartmentalize me, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you're going to put me in a tub. You're in this tub of where you're here. This, <laughs> oh, you, you know, you yeah. You have anti-Semitic depression syndrome. <laughs> Take these blue and green pills for two days right. and you got, man, fuck that, man. Right. Look, man, I've been through a lot, man. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of shit, man. But one thing, you know, I'm never going to do, I'm not going to change a bend. I'm not going to give up. Mm. That's real, man. Yeah. So shit. Do you believe Believe, let me. This is this is an important question. Do you believe that you existed before this life? Yo, man. Sometimes I feel like I have deja vu all the fucking mm, time. Bro. Yeah, I've had situations. I'm like, man, I already did this. Yeah, this shit already fucking happened. Yeah, I believe with all my heart we existed before this because, at, at, by, like, again, I you know, let's talk literal definition, right? At, by definition, if you believe that there's life after this, well, that means that you're eternal, right? That means that death doesn't have an ending to you, which also would mean if death doesn't define your, your end, right? If you exist after death, well, that also means you're not defined by birth. That if there's no end at death, that means there's no beginning at birth. Yo, I never thought about that. Right. Man. That's crazy. Yeah. So think about that. So the Yo. idea of you are literally eternal, which uh, again, and I say this all the time, the God inside you, that's what I preach people yeah. is the God inside you because you're an eternal being. You are not defined by death or birth. There's something inside you that's greater. We're not the animals. We're not the trees. Yes, there's a spirit inside of those, right? But it's different because I'm different. I have dominion over all things on this earth yeah. because I'm eternal. And what I am as a creator, as a human being is so much more than anything else on earth and all of us as human beings. So if you were to understand that, then you have to ask yourself the question, who really am I? And that's why every human being has that question. Who am I? We wonder where I came from. Why am I here? Where am I going? We ask this. Those are the questions that every human being from the history of the time, beginning of time has always asked because we know there's something greater inside of me than just to exist. Could you imagine if your existence was just defined as you're born, you're going to go to school, you're going to live, you're going to eat some food while you're here, you're going to have some sex with some women, right? <laughs> and then, you know, one day you're going to die. That's it. You're That's done. your existence. Yeah, fucking right. You have any, like, what I've created, who I am, and what I'm capable of? Yeah. You, you're going to define me to that? No, no, no. I'm so much bigger than that. And so when you have that overarching mentality of who you are, that I literally existed before this and I will exist after this, you're going to try and tell me these problems that I'm experiencing here are bigger than me? Right, that this pain that I'm experiencing is bigger than me, that I can't overcome it without the help of a pill? The fuck did you just say? You don't even know who you are if that's what you're going to try and tell me, let alone you don't know who the fuck I am. True. Right? True. And so that's why that's why I believe you get people like yourself who who go through pain and yet so, for some reason you can't even figure out why you still want to keep going. I still want to keep going, man. You don't be talking to fucking quit rapping and right. shit. Like, <laughs> like it's fucking dangerous, you know, yeah. but it's like, man, I got to fucking, I got people, I got to keep going. Yeah. I, I keep creating. I got new shit I want to record. I got right. all this fucking new shit coming out. I got this, I got that, you know? Yeah. I, I just, I just keep fucking going, man. Sometimes I'm like, man, why don't I just get a regular fucking job? Yeah. And just work my job. Why not? And be yeah. happy. You could have stayed at AT&T yeah, yeah, being, yeah. you could have become the manager there but, at AT&T, bro. <laughs> man, that would have been great too. That'd Sell been a lot great. of iPhones. Yeah. Man, you know, fuck, I could just be another guy doing you that, could. man. Yeah. Fucking Bluetoothing it up, bro. But why don't you? Let, let's, let me ask you that. Why do you want to build an influence? Because you have a large social media following. Yeah. You have a lot of people know who you are through rapping, and now you've been on TV, right, on a really big TV show. Yeah. You, you've you been around some big people. Why? Like, what's what's the purpose behind that? Um, I mean, I think a key to, uh, for, for me, well, for one, my family, right? You know, I want, I want to be... 
I want to show them mm-hmm. that we can we are we're we can do more. We're mm-hmm. going to do more as men. But for me, man, the key to happiness, I think, for for men especially, is freedom mm-hmm. and options, right? Yeah. So if if I don't do these things, I won't have freedom. Yeah. I don't have options to do what I want. Mm-hmm. I want more, so I, I'm going to do more. Mm. Why do I want more? Life is fun. I'm blessed. Mm. I, I woke up today, bro. Yeah. I got my arms, my legs, my hands. Yeah. I can see and hear. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of shit we take for for granted, man. And we fucking complain about the, the Wi Fi slow here. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was watching a documentary the other day, man. These kids, um, uh, oh, fuck, where they're at Honduras, man. They were in the mud water, bro. Yeah. Getting fish out of the mud, and they were happy. They were happy. Mm-hmm. They didn't have any fucking Starbucks. Right. They didn't have Crocs, yeah. bro. But they they were just trying to fish for some food. They didn't they didn't have fucking houses, bro. Mm-hmm. So for me, man, my purpose. And the reason why I want more, because I want to, sh- I want to give more, bro. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to give more. You know, the best feeling for me is being able to give something to mm-hmm. somebody I love, somebody yeah. I want to see, and 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 make their fucking day, bro. Mm-hmm. I love giving people smiles, bro. Yeah. That's why I'm goofy, bro. Yeah, that's why I'm. That's why I'm who I am. Yeah, I'm trying to put on that fucking tough facade, and I'm mm-hmm. fucking fun, man. Come talk to me. Yeah. You know, right. Share your pain with me. What, what you got going on? Let's mm. make you laugh real quick. Now you're not upset anymore. Yeah. You know, Look, anyone who's ever said, I say this all the time, man. Anyone who has ever said that money doesn't buy happiness has never had enough of it to give it away. There you go. Because that's the best feeling in the world. It is. Right. Man. And it away. It, giving it away, helping someone. Right. Uh, you know, like, like, I don't know if you know anything about Operation Underground Railroad. I mentioned almost every podcast, every video I fucking do. I'm always talking about because they go into the, you know, uh, darkest places of hell all over the world do sting operations to save children from child sex slavery. Damn. And so, you know, we're, we're having this conversation right now. There's evil out there. Yeah. Right. There's real evil, whether it's here in the U S or out in the world. Right. And the fact that that shit's happening on our watch, the fact that that shit's happening while we're sitting here, I believe that's happening because we allow it to happen. Yeah. The only thing necessary for evil to triumph in this world is for good men and women to do nothing. Yeah. When you do nothing, you are nothing. You don't do anything to help. And so you allow that evil to happen, right? Yeah. And so if you do not become something great and inspire, then you not only have failed yourself and who you could have become here, but you failed everyone else along the way. Your family, your friends, you could have inspired them. You could have become something great to make a difference in their life. And that's what I, I have such a problem with when we talk about these issues. We're like, oh, we need we need help. We need help. Let's, let's pass this law. Let's pass. No, no, no. So you're you're saying we need help, government save us, right? We need help. Let's vote. Let, like we need a new politician. You need more rules. And we need more rules, and that'll help. No, no, no. If you need help, become someone greater and inspire those around you to become someone greater. And if you do that, you think you're going to be looking up to drug dealers as your mo- no, no. You're going to be looking up to real heroes. Yeah. People who have actually made a difference in this world, and you're going to see there's something greater in that life, and you're not going to try and do that because that's your idol. No, no. Fuck that. Right? That's not my idol. This is my idol. This is who I can become. And it takes someone like you to actually show them that. Yeah. Because what you just said is that's all you knew. Well, the most dangerous information, the information you don't know, if you don't know what you don't know, then you're screwed. Because by not knowing and by only seeing this, you have been you have become blind to all this out here that could have been right man true i'm and i'm learning now this being this traveling now man yeah i'm seeing part other parts of the other of, of the country this country is beautiful yeah there's so much free land yeah there's, <laughs> there's a lot of land out there like you guys think that this country's overpopulated dude that's a lie yeah it's a fucking dude, lie hey man it's it is a, not even dude close. it's not even like we don't have enough people that's right hey man, yes. everybody's piling up in the same fucking shit whole yeah. areas fucking mm-hmm. You guys are part of the same rat race, bro. There's so much beautiful land. Learn the land. Learn how to farm it. Shit. Learn. Learn. Yeah. Come on with the nature, man. Yeah. I've been ever since I've been traveling, man. I've been experiencing the land, man. I'm like, dude, this this place is beautiful, man. Yeah. I, I I be I was out west, man. One of the first times I was out west. I'm at a drop top, man. I got the drop top. I mean, I I, I got to be specific because you know whatever yeah. motherfuckers can talk shit, but this is real. Yeah. And um, I'm just I'm I'm looking in the sky, man. I got tears going down my eyes. I was like, I can't believe I'm here, man. Yeah. I, I remember sleeping on the floor. I'm here in this beautiful earth, and I'm here, and I'm experiencing this right now. This, and I'm alive, mm. and I can make a fucking difference right now. Yeah. You know, I can feel sorry for myself, or I can keep pushing. Mm. Let's go, baby. Let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, yeah. man. Yeah. Let's go. I got you know I got a son and a daughter, man. 
And um, they're so proud of their dad, man. And that makes me feel so good that my my son and my daughter love me mm-hmm. and they're so proud of me, man. And I'm inspiring them to be great, great children, even yeah. though they don't live with me, man. I'm so involved and I've, I've had such an impact and influence in our lives, man. They're they're just they're just amazing kids. Yeah. Man. So, yeah. Well, what's the goal for you? Let me ask you that because obviously you're going to continue growing. Yeah. You're going to continue pushing. Where do you see yourself ending up? Like, where do you see your brand going? What's the end all be all for you? There, I don't have an end all be all. Mm-hmm. So you know, my goal is to continue to grow, um, grow Mario Cannon, and, and and you know, and, and spread uh, positivity, but also give people confidence mm-hmm. to not always have to follow systems that are put in place for them. Yeah. Because systems don't, the, the systems that are in place for you might not be for you. Mm. You got to figure yourself out. So my end goal, man, is to, to get more so I can give more. I want to I want to have youth centers in, mm. in, in, uh, in cities that need uh, activities for the kids, man. The problem is, man, that I see, like, especially in the, in the town I'm in right now is the children are bored, right? And the mm-hmm. elders just scold them. Like, they're always on their phone, you know? And so they, instead of giving them like, opportunities, they just give them more rules. Yeah. And, like how we do in America, right? Mm-hmm. They're doing that to the kids. Yeah. They give them more rules and, and, and put them more, like, this shit that is not going to help them, right? right. The, in, in the real life mm-hmm. sector. So I want to be able to have um, centers where kids can do the arts. Mm. They can learn about banking and checking and credit, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They can learn about trades that are out there in the future, right? Different trades, how shit actually, how much money money you actually make from this shit, mm-hmm. right? Right. Um, how much college really costs, and, you know, and what really will happen if you graduate and where you work, mm-hmm. not go to school, get good grades, you know? Yeah. No, they need to know what's happening in the world. Right. So I want to do that, man. I want to have an activity center, like almost like a boys and girls club, but, but on the level of if they want to have their own podcast, I have a free podcast. Mm. I have a radio broadcasting in yeah. there. I got a, I got cooking. Teach people how to cook. Yeah. How to use a credit card. Yeah. Because a lot of kids don't know. They don't know shit about that. Right. You know? So this is the basic necessities to start life, man, mm-hmm. and for them to be creative and be safe. I need, I need a safe space for children mm. because they get overlooked so much. Mm. You know, we we do, man, and um, we act out for attention. Mm-hmm. You know, look at me. I yeah. got the rims on my car. Right. Look at me. I got the gun in my hand. Right. Look at me. I'm selling dope. You know. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I need attention right. because that's what we do. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of labels, they, they benefit off that shit too, mm-hmm. right? All these killings, killing rappers and shit, that gets, yeah. that shit gets views, man. Dude, it does. Right? It does. They fucking beefing like, oh, man, mm-hmm. I fucking right, make a song about somebody I shot at or I killed, you know? Mm-hmm. Give them some money, sign yeah. them. Dude, here's, what, here's what's fascinating. Have you ever, I don't know if you ever thought about this, right? The attention span of the world, and especially the youth, has gone so low. Like, like in the music industry, songs need to be shorter now, right? And you can't release full albums. People aren't releasing full albums anymore. They're just releasing singles because people don't have the attention span to sit and listen to a full album for 20 to 30 minutes, right? And notice the podcast and YouTube. Notice where everything's going of short-form video, TikToks, shorts or reels, right? This is the new movement. And here's what's so fascinating about this. You can directly measure someone's intelligence by their attention span. If they prefer to sit on TikTok as opposed to sitting on YouTube, I can tell you right now, this person is less intelligent than this person. I'm just going to be real. People, and like the person who can read a book as opposed to being on YouTube has higher IQ and higher intelligence than the person on YouTube as opposed to on TikTok, right? True. And so what, what, is that, what does that show me? That shows me that the biggest problem in America is boredom. If we're, f- and here's what I mean by this, we're the fattest country in the world, maybe the second or first fattest country in the world. Most people are eating food, not because they're hungry, because they're bored. Do you, you know what, me and you're going to hit it. You're <laughs> actually going to agree on this. I was just talking about this. Yeah. I was like, me, you know why we have so many issues and problems? I was like, we're bored. We're bored. I was like, I was like, we're, I was like, we're too safe. We're too yeah. comfortable. Right. I was like, everybody's fucking spoiled and soft. Amen. So now we got all these all these new diseases and all these new like right. mental mm-hmm. things they have they're pre- they're pushing on people and people are believing they are this. So that's why yeah. people are fucking going through a lot of shit. Yeah. They're putting themselves through this shit mm-hmm. because somebody's telling them that's what they are. That's right. You know? Hey, you got mental misphoria. I'm making some shit up, you know. Right. Now you're like, oh man, now you got to tell everybody you have this shit. Yeah. And it's you, a great excuse. Yeah. I, I, actually, I can't do that cuz yeah. I have mental misphoria. Oh, okay. <laughs> you want to go over here and I can't do that. I have mental misphoria. Let's get you safe room. Oh, okay. Here's some more pills, okay? Yeah. I gotta take these pills. You know what the fuck they do? You know, now this for my 
disorder. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, man, we, we we're too comfortable, man. We're too fucking comfortable, dude. The county I live in mm-hmm. is the most obese county in the state. Really? Yeah, dude. And like the thing is, are people really hungry? Like I was, I was just watching a video about this. Like, are people really hungry? Like, look at that big fat fucker eating, and they're like, "Oh, I'm hungry." It's like, no, you're not. You're not gonna starve. You could probably go 30 days without eating, and it'll be uncomfortable. And your body will be able to take all that stored energy and survive off it. Survive off it, dude. There was a dude who was 700 pounds, where they did a very controlled experiment for a year fast, where all he drank was water for a year, and he survived because he had all the stored energy. He survived off the fat. He lived for a year without food. I'm like, we don't understand what hunger really is because we think we're hungry. No, no, you're bored. You're you bored. want the sensation of eating food and getting that hot dog and getting that quick food because it's so accessible. Yeah. It's so accessible. DoorDash, oh, I can have, you know, Beto's or Panda right at my house. Yeah, they want to get fat cheap. That's right. They want to get fat cheap. They want to get right. fat real quick and cheap, man. But dude, and then you're talking here about the kids and the youth, man. They're out doing stuff because they're bored. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to entertain themselves or they don't know how to sit in silence and meditate. Nope. They don't know how to take time to themselves and think. They can't even speak anymore. They can't even talk. They don't know how to talk to each other. It's just like, like let's just communicate. Let's learn how to communicate. Let's learn how to, hey, sit down and think. Explore your mind. Let's say, hey, don't, no books, no nothing. And if you tried to do that to somebody, oh my gosh, all hell would break loose. You ever notice the, the fucking kids that sit like across from each other? They got their fucking phones. They're like this. Yeah. yeah. And then they're like, yeah. They'll look up, they'll look up at each other every once in a while. I fucking, I, it fucking, I hate yeah. it, bro. Right. I fucking hate it. I, my kids, they don't have, like, so when I have my kids, I just take their fucking phones. Right. Give me your phone. Everybody, it's time to have fun. Let's kick it. And we're we going to kick it. Yeah. Y'all with, y'all with dad. You know, yeah. we go jeeping and shit. We go all types of shit. I make them clean the gym. We work out. Yeah. We, we go on walks, runs. We go to the tracks. Yeah. Dude, we, we do shit, man. I, I mean, it ain't a whole bunch of dudes in town, man, but I'll I make it happen. Dude, <laughs> that's the thing. Like, what you want to build, I think that's 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 critical. It's not even important. It's critical. Yeah. Right. Because if we're if we're gonna if we're gonna escape, you want to talk about mental slavery, right? You are a slave to your phone at that point. You're a slave to your habits, and your habits are a direct correlation of what you're gonna become. And you're gonna become someone who ought constantly wants a dopamine hit, whether it's your phone, whether it's your food, whether it's the drugs, whatever it is, you need something else to you entertain tick. you. You got a tick, man. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. A little tick. So, dude, listen, man. Let me ask you the biggest question. How do we save this country, in your opinion? There's a lot of shit happening, right? There's a lot of shit happening. Yeah. What do you think we need to do to save this country? We need more accountability, bro. Uh, so we, we got to take away... We gotta stop pacifying, man. We pacify mm. everybody. Yeah. We 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 got it. We gotta get back to holding people accountable. Mm. Let's stop diagnosing shit, and let's start looking for solutions. So, so yeah. stop fucking causing more problems. Let's just look for solutions, mm. and the solutions rely within each and every one of us, yes. man. We all gotta fucking make a difference, man. Mm. And I just just pointing the finger shit is just fucking old, man. Look in the mirror, motherfucker. Yeah. Look in the mirror. Right. Check yourself. Yeah. We got to start checking ourselves. Mm. People are looking to blame other people. Like, I, I like for that, they need, they're looking for other people for happiness. Mm-hmm. Make your fucking self happy. Yeah. What makes you happy? Right. It's not my job to make you happy. It's not my job. Right. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I, I use that in dating. Like, you know, it's mm-hmm. not my job. You got to be happy before you meet me. Yeah. Uh, he makes me so happy. I hear that. No, mm-hmm. you got to already be happy. You got to bring happiness to me. I can't be the one constantly supplying you with that. No, it's got to be a collective effort, man. Mm. And that's how the country has got to be a collective effort. We got to come together. We got to drop all these fucking labels, right? Mm. Um, whatever you identify, whatever, man, fuck all that. Yeah, right. Man to man. Yeah. We, here's what we got to do, bro. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, it's just too many labels. Mm-hmm. It's too many excuses. Yeah. Drop yeah, that shit. Yes, Let's, go. Let's go. Yeah, Let's go. Let's go, man. I love that. What are we waiting on? <laughs> I don't know what the fuck we're waiting on. Because it's go like at this point, could there be a more important time? What do we what do we think it's gonna happen three years or no? No, it could it could not be worse. It's gonna get worse. It's gonna like like let's do it now. Let's go, man. If we don't, we should have done it yesterday. Right, like we gotta start doing that shit now, man. The, the, the structure and accountability is out, man. Like you know, I know they like they took the Bibles out of school and shit like that, right? Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Here's the thing: is like I'm actually like I so I've read 
the Bible. I've read the Quran. Yeah. I've read the Apocrypha. I've read the Torah, right? I've read a lot of different uh, religious texts. Yeah. Awesome. I, you know, you know what's like, you know, what's done is expand in my mind and just what really it means to be, you know, to be godlike, right? To be spiritual. There you go. And like, you know what? I like quit, quit taking out the Bible. Why don't we just push all the religions on kids and not like push them, but like, let's say here's religion. Here's what rules the world. Why would we not want to learn about because that? Because it rules the world. It's like, you know what I'm crazy. saying? It's crazy. Don't take it out. We, right. we need to learn about the shit. Yeah. This is what, this is what the money is centered around. Right. It's not even taxed. <laughs> Right. Learn about it, right? You know, yeah, and, and you know, and it actually had moral values, had principles in there to help us, you know, respect mm -hmm. each other as human beings, as, yeah. as, as as man and woman. So we we don't do crazy things to each other, we don't right. harm each other. You know, it, it's preached those values in there. Yeah. You know, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Like those are values that need to be taught still, right? right. You know, yeah, because it's not really it's not taught anymore. It's, now it's just a law, dude. At this oh, point, it's we, another rule. Yeah, and we know about rules. Rules are. People break rules every That's right. day. Yeah. So. You know what we don't break is standards. Yeah. If you have a standard, if you have a core, like and Andy says this, you know, we we're just talking about Andy, core values. If you have core values in your life, you stick to those more than any other law. You got to. Right? Man. And if you have standards, if you have morals, then you'll live by that. You'll die by that. That's the, that's the thing. When you have a moral in your life that you live by, this is who I am, you will die for that. That is what we need to reestablish because if you talk about it, like, you know, the KGB when they talked in the 1980s, uh, you know, and this is just, they, they've been doing this for a long time. You know, the KGB, right? The secret service for, yeah. uh, for Russia, their, their method of how do you destroy America is one thing. You can't destroy America with guns because America ain't going nowhere with the military and every single, like there's more guns than people in this country, right? Yeah. <laughs> you ain't going to be able to attack America, right? Physically or, you know, you know, so how do you do it? You do it through the spiritual. And this is literally their method of destroying America. They say you attack the spiritual and the morals. They call it demoralization of a, a country. So when you remove the morals of a country, you remove all set standards. And by doing so, they'll destroy themselves from within. I mean, that's kind of how you defeat your opponent, right? That's right. You, 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 know, you, you, you beat them down mentally. Yeah, that's right. Morally. Yeah. Once you got their, once you got their spirit down, mm -hmm. all the other shit don't matter. Right. Everything else crumbles around it. That's right. Yeah. Dude, we spit some fire on this one, man. Yeah. But I got one more question for you before we sign off, right? Everyone listen to this. There's a lot of entrepreneurs who listen to this podcast. If you had one message for everybody, what would it be? Oh, man, one message. Yeah. It's one message. It's tough. Listen, this is my message for, for everybody. My one message is please give yourself a chance to be you. So before you subscribe to anything, whether it's a, I don't know if it's a job you're thinking about or a career path your family wants you on or whatever, um, just give yourself a chance to be you. All right. So take some time out and figure out what that is. And it's going to do that alone, but just do that for me. Mm. Hey Amen. I love that, man. Appreciate you coming on, dude. You came all the way out here. This was an op awesome episode. I know everyone's going to love this, but I want to make sure everyone knows if you're listening to this, this dude's got an album dropping. What do we say? By the end of this month, you got a new yeah. album coming yeah. out. Breaking hearts and breaking records, man. Breaking <laughs> hearts, breaking records. So mm -hmm. everyone, make sure you go follow this guy, Mario Cannon on Instagram, right? Yeah, this this is Cannon, man. One this, end. No relation to Nick Cannon. <laughs> he got too many damn kids. <laughs> he's, hey. he's populating the earth for us. So Thanks, Nick Cannon. Yeah, him and I'll, Elon will do it for us. I'm going to be on Wild and Out after this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on there. I know. There you go. All yeah. right. He can come at me then. So, all right. Make sure you guys go follow. Again, we'll tag all this at the bottom. Make sure you guys go follow this guy. Album drop. Dropping uh, what we say in the end of this month in about yeah, a month. I say about a month, man. Okay. But I, I got a I got a track coming out with Inali Chopper. Okay, a video. Oh shit! It's already the song's done. It's when's crazy. that coming out? <sighs> man, he you know he's touring right now. So yeah, so right. when he comes back, you know I'll be able to. All right. Yeah. So we got we got tracks coming out, and then as well, you got a podcast coming out too, right? Yes, yes. I'm coming out with my own podcast called The Elite State of Mind. Ooh, I like the that. The Elite when State you of launch Mind. That? Um, I'm actually got I got stuff recorded already, so oh, hell yeah. I, I might launch it any day. I just got to get back to my my studio. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> but I, you know, hopefully I can get him on. Dude, let's do it, man. I'm down. I'm yeah. game. I, I don't do I don't do uh, Zoom calls though. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Appreciate you coming on, bro. This thanks is for awesome. having me, bro. Welcome to the bullpen officially.